You dive relaxed, but like any sport, diving can be physically strenuous, such as when walking in your gear, swimming in a current, or when responding to an emergency. So, stay reasonably fit with a regular exercise program approved by your physician. Eat well, get adequate rest, and keep immunizations current. It's also a good idea to have a physical examination regularly. Like any physical activity, diver stresses put demands on your heart and cardiovascular system. This can happen lifting and carrying gear due to heat stress from wearing exposure suits in the sun and so on. These factors can cause heart attacks in predisposed individuals and they can be issues for other cardiovascular conditions. If you have or may have increased cardiovascular risk, be sure to discuss it with your physician. Never use alcohol or tobacco prior to diving. If you drink, use moderation the night before diving. Some drugs can create problems while diving, so be cautious and consult your physician if you're unsure whether you can use a particular drug. You want to be in good physical health when diving. If you feel ill, cancel the dive. Dive again when you're well, and as you've already learned, don't use medications to eliminate symptoms and dive while you're sick. Diving is supposed to be fun, and you enjoy it by diving when healthy. Like in any activity, you keep your dive skills and knowledge sharp by using them and by diving regularly. If you can't get to open water, practice in a pool with a buddy. Staying up to date includes interacting with other divers and online communities like Scuba Earth because it helps you keep up with current trends and practices. If you go more than six months without diving, see your PADI instructor about refreshing your knowledge and skills in the Scuba Review program. Continuing your diver education is a great way to stay sharp because you use existing skills while developing new ones. You can do this in the PADI Advanced Open Water Diver Course, Specialty Diver Courses, and other programs that expand your experience and qualifications. Most recreational diving uses air as a breathing gas. Air is actually a mix of gases. Practically speaking, it is 21% oxygen and 79% nitrogen. We'll look at four issues that relate to breathing air underwater. Oxygen toxicity, contaminated air, decompression sickness, and gas narcosis. We'll look at oxygen toxicity, contaminated air, and decompression sickness in this section, and gas narcosis later in section five. Although we need oxygen to live, under pressure, oxygen becomes toxic. It also has fire and combustion issues with equipment. When using air within recreational depth limits, though, neither of these are significant issues. Enriched air nitrox, however, is air enriched with oxygen, so it has a lower nitrogen proportion and a higher oxygen proportion. This has advantages compared to using regular air, but oxygen toxicity and equipment concerns can be issues with enriched air nitrox. You can learn to handle these issues in the PADI Enriched Air Diver course. But until you're certified as an enriched air diver, don't use a cylinder labeled as an enriched air cylinder. Contaminated air is air with impurities in it. It's very rare in diving. Contaminated air may smell or taste bad, but not necessarily. Signs and symptoms of contaminated air include headache, nausea, dizziness, unresponsiveness, and cherry red lips or nail beds. Never dive with air that smells or tastes bad, and end the dive immediately if you start feeling ill. Have a diver who may have breathed contaminated air breathe fresh air and provide oxygen if available. Contact emergency medical care. Avoid contaminated air by getting your cylinder filled only by reputable professional scuba centers. These operators use specialized breathing air compressors and filters and know the value of regular air testing. You've learned that you have time limits underwater beyond how long your air lasts or how long you stay warm. 
One of these comes from nitrogen. During a dive, increased pressure causes nitrogen to dissolve from your air into your body tissues. The greater the pressure, that is the deeper you are, and the longer you're down, the more nitrogen dissolves into your body. Your body doesn't use nitrogen, so when you ascend and the pressure drops, this excess nitrogen dissolves back out of your body tissues. If the extra nitrogen isn't excessive, this happens harmlessly. Your dive computer, or tables like the RDP table, or ERDPML, helps you keep excess nitrogen within accepted limits. More about this shortly. If there's too much dissolved nitrogen, however, when you ascend, it may come out of solution faster than your body can eliminate it. Bubbles can form in body tissues causing decompression sickness, which is a serious medical condition, sometimes called the BENS, or DCS. Signs and symptoms include paralysis, shock, weakness and prolonged fatigue, dizziness, numbness, tingling, difficulty breathing, limb and joint pain, and in severe cases, unconsciousness and death. DCS signs and symptoms may be obvious, but they can also be subtle. Like a mild to moderate ache, weakness, or prolonged undue fatigue. They occur within 15 minutes to 12 hours after a dive, though some longer intervals have occurred. Symptoms may be intermittent. Regardless, treat all suspected cases of decompression sickness as serious. We'll look at the first aid for it in Section 5. Time and depth primarily influence how your body absorbs and releases nitrogen. But physiologists think some other factors predispose people to DCS. These include fatigue, dehydration, vigorous exercise, cold, poor fitness, illness and injuries, alcohol consumption, and age. In the next subsection, you'll learn how to help adjust for these if any of them apply to you. To keep the risk of decompression sickness very low, we need to keep excess nitrogen levels within accepted limits. But there's no way to measure the actual nitrogen dissolving into our bodies, so we use dive computers and dive tables. Dive computers and dive tables apply a mathematical model to estimate the changes in body nitrogen before, during, and after a dive. Based on the outcomes of thousands of dives, Decompression models are highly reliable for the vast majority of people, most of the time. But they don't assess anything actually going on in your body, and they don't know if any predisposing factors apply to you. Because people vary in their susceptibility to decompression sickness, no dive computer or dive table can guarantee that decompression sickness will never occur, even though you dive within its limits. As a diver, you must accept that some risk of DCS remains. To help reduce and manage the remaining risk, the key is to always dive well within dive computer or table limits. And be a safe diver. Slowly ascend from every dive, no faster than 18 meters or 60 feet per minute, or slower as specified by your computer. Make a safety stop at 5 meters or 15 feet. All of these practices help keep you well within the model's predications. 